Apple has long been praised for its innovation and design, but also been criticized for what some people call a monopolistic approach. On the one side, you've got Apple, a tech titan, a pioneer company whose fortunes were made mainstream when they introduced the iPhone. We are calling it iPhone. And then on the other side, you've got Apple, the bad company that just wants to keep users locked in. Large part due to the success of the iPhone, Apple's signature smartphone product. I think everyone, whichever side of the so-called wall garden they sit at, has an opinion about this. So let's break down the pros and cons and look at how these developments could shape the future of tech. For me, on the plus side, Apple's ecosystem offers a seamless user experience. You've got an iPhone, an iPad, a Mac, in fact, any combination of Apple products. They all work beautifully together. Devices sync with each other at an instant, and for me, that makes my workflow perfect. And it's the same sort of integration and usability that I'd expect as a minimum if I was using similar ecosystems from Samsung or Google. And it's this integration that is a big win for user convenience and brand loyalty. I like to think that Apple's approach and their strategy has led to high quality, innovative products that have consistently set industry standards. There's no way that executives at Google and Samsung aren't envious of what Apple has done with their products that either retain existing users by continuously making new products that seamlessly just work and encourage them to buy more and to not look at the competition, or entice new users by adding those features that users would only jump ship to if they were included. Let's look at the inclusion of USB-C. Apple were encouraged to put USB-C on the iPhone and they finally did to the relief of many with the iPhone 15 series. Now let's play devil's advocate. In this case, we're limiting choice by universally adopting USB-C. How can innovation flourish if everyone is using USB-C? When the next big USB-D rolls out, is every electronics manufacturer gonna be forced to comply? Critics will always say that Apple's closed ecosystem locks in consumers and stifles competition, which means less freedom for consumers, potentially making it difficult for those same consumers to switch to other brands. It might be difficult for some, but it's definitely not impossible. I'd happily trade in my Apple Watch for another watch from another brand. I'm doing a lot of running at the moment and I'm very aware that while I can use this watch effectively as a fitness tracker, if I want to take it to the next level, then I probably should invest in a more dedicated sports watch rather than the Apple smartwatch. And I'm happy to do that. While for some, the hardware trade-offs are much easier, it's at that software level where you are most combined. Want to use a different app store or payment system? Not so easy with Apple. Critics say by controlling its app store and hardware, Apple limits competition, which can stifle for innovation and lead to higher prices. But Apple, in their defense, will always say that their main goal is to protect users by making great products that enrich their users' lives around the world, focusing on creating high quality and a safe experience through seamless integration of hardware, software and services. And now enter the EU's Digital Markets Act. This legislation aims to ensure fair competition which essentially will force Apple to open up its services to third parties and effectively play nice with others. It is a big deal because it might lower prices and increase those choices for consumers. But with the introduction of this act, it arguably brings several privacy and security concerns to the forefront like data protection and privacy risks. The act's focus on opening up platform ecosystems could lead to increased data sharing and interoperability between services, which should immediately raise concerns about how our personal data is managed and protected, especially in the light of existing regulations like GDPR. Allowing third-party apps and app stores more access to operating systems could potentially introduce security vulnerabilities. This is because it may be more challenging to ensure that all third-party services meet those same security standards as those enforced by the original platform providers. Experts have called for amendments to the Digital Marketing Act to better protect users' rights, fearing that the Act as it stands may undermine competition, data protection, privacy and consumer protection. And while it seems like this Act mainly targets Apple because that's what the news says, Apple users in Europe will be able to download apps from rival app stores. Companies like 
Apple have expressed concerns about the Digital Markets Act in its current form, anticipating that new regulations could introduce privacy and security risks by preventing large digital platforms from imposing certain constraints that currently help to maintain user privacy and security. But these risks highlight the delicate balance between fostering competition and protecting users' privacy and security. The implementation of the Digital Markets Act will require careful consideration to mitigate these risks while achieving the Act's goals, which fundamentally are more choices and better services so consumers like you and I will have access to a wider range of services which could lead to better quality and fairer prices. Easier switching between providers, which the Act and the compliant companies' products covered under the Act are designed to make it easier for consumers to switch providers if they wish, promoting more customer freedom. Creating short-term inconvenience for some online services is seen as the necessary step for long-term gain to promote greater competition, which will ultimately benefit consumers by providing more choices and fostering innovation. But in answer to this, Apple has announced various changes to comply with the Digital Markets Act, and those include introducing over 600 new APIs and app analytics for developers, the introduction of USB-C to the iPhone, alternative payment processing and app stores outside of the Apple App Store coming soon. And all of these changes are designed to open up the market and provide more choices for consumers, but they do also introduce new privacy and security risks, which Apple is addressing with additional safeguards. Which if you're looking for some light reading, I recommend looking at this document about how Apple are complying with the Digital Markets Act and their efforts to protect user security and privacy in the EU despite these rules and regulations. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. It's generally advice about the future and gives some warnings about the fact that while Apple will try to mitigate the user privacy and security risks as much as they can, if users use third party app stores to download content or pay with alternative payment processes, there will be added risks, which means iPhones outside of the EU will be more secure than iPhones within those EU countries that are complying with the Digital Markets Act. But overall, the DMA aims to create a safer digital space where the rights of users are protected and to establish a level playing field that fosters innovation and competitiveness, benefiting all consumers in the long run. But the question is, will we be visiting this in the future, discussing whether this moment was that turning point? And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse and the plot thickens because Across the pond, the US Department of Justice has filed a lawsuit against Apple, accusing it of monopolistic practices and being a little too clingy with its consumers. This, like the Digital Markets Act, could lead to significant changes in how Apple operates, potentially benefiting consumers and developers alike. But could the outcome of this case be the end of Apple's my way or the highway attitude? While the Digital Markets Act, which we were talking about before, saying this is what all consumer products should do to comply, not targeting any individual companies, the US DOJ's lawsuit personally attacks Apple, arguing about what, in their opinion, Apple are doing. But as our complaint alleges, Apple has maintained monopoly power in the smartphone market, not simply by staying ahead of the competition on the merits, but by violating federal antitrust law and undermining innovation by allegedly suppressing apps and services that could make users less reliant on the iPhone. All in the name of a positive result that could lead to significant changes in how Apple operates. But is it a good thing? While this is all about Apple now, what about other companies? Will these legal challenges set precedents, prompting them to rethink their strategies in order to avoid similar scrutiny? Apple have already made changes to products in line with those regulations, but was that the start of a slippery slope? We've seen with many products, Apple's approach does have a ripple effect on the entire tech industry. We're talking about a lawsuit against one of the biggest companies in the world. Why should technology be all the same? Why does it have to to interconnect? Shouldn't the competition be innovating more aggressively to create better products to compete? Remember, Google and Samsung would love to have an established ecosystem like Apple does, but if they get too dominant within their own base, will those same companies adapt their strategies to avoid similar regulatory scrutiny, or will they pounce to capitalize on any openings created by changes 
in Apple's policies. What about the little guys, the up and comers? Are their DMA and the DOJ paving the way for more innovation and competition? Are they actually opening the floodgates for creativity? Let me know in the comments below. Where I stand basically is why should governments have a say in the way companies make their products and advance their technologies? And why should these advancements that make one company different from another be shared? Aren't we limiting our own choices by making everything similar. If you want a more structured operating system that focuses on more user privacy, security, and less on customization and choice, you can choose the iPhone. And if you want more customization, more app stores, and more choice, then you can choose Android. There is your choice right there. It can't be argued that Apple's approach since day one has led to significant advancements in technology, not only for Apple, but through the iOS versus Android saga. We've seen some of the best phones ever made, like the latest Samsung S24 Ultra or the latest Google Pixel, all born out of competition and trying to capture our attention. While the EU's Digital Markets Act and the US DOJ case are pushing for more openness, which could lead to a more competitive and diverse market, it might not. So what's next for Apple and the tech world? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, Apple is facing a crossroads and the whole tech landscape might just get a whole lot more random. And I suppose that's just the way we like it. If you like this video, press that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.